Hey guys, it's Jordy here. So lately I've been getting asked a lot of questions regarding the snapper I've been catching land based from the rock wall down at Wyndham Harbour. So what I thought I'd do here is I thought I'd put a video together just detailing the outfit, the lures, the techniques and everything uh, that I've been using to catch the fish down there at the rock wall. Now throughout this video I will be making recommendations on where I think you should be spending the money on the outfit as well as areas where I think that you could save a few dollars where I might have spent a little bit more than necessary. This is also the outfit I use to chase the school mull away down there as well. So those mull away in the 70 to 80 centimetre sort of range, you get mull away up to a metre on it as well, I suppose. Now all of this gear is available from Hooked on Bait and Tackle in the Hoppers Crossing. So if you go into the store there and see Big Mick, he can supply you with all the gear. Or if he hasn't got it in stock, he can probably recommend something that he does have in his stock that is pretty well suited and also similar in quality that will do the job as well. Now, if you don't live anywhere near Hopper's Crossing or you aren't in Melbourne at all, just leave your comment below with a link to the gear that you're looking at and I'll reply to you and let you know whether I think it's suitable or not. So first, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the rod and reel that I've been using to catch the snapper from the rock wall there. Second, we're going to look at the soft plastics and then finally, we'll be going over the techniques and a few of the little tips there that I've learned for catching the snapper on the rock wall. Let's get started. So this is the rod and reel that I've been using to catch the snapper down at the rock wall. So we're going to go over it bit by bit. So the first thing we're going to look at here is the rod itself. So this is the NS Black Hole KN Red and it is the 762 in the 4 to 8 kilo. So it's a little bit longer than what I'd use in a boat. Uh, the main reasons for that obviously are getting a good cast off the rocks. But another reason for that is the longer rod is good for keeping larger fish out of the rocks when they're at your feet. Uh, a little bit more length helps you sort of keep them just off that little bit of a rock edge and I've found that's been handy to land some of the bigger fish. Now you can choose other rods around the $150 mark as they'll also be suitable. However, I find that around $150 is a good medium price as if you're using rods that are $200 or more, um, if you break them or you know damage them in any way, oh, I find it starts to get a little bit painful. So you know that $150 mark I find is around about the price that you want to spend. Now the reel that I'm using is a Shimano Stratic 3000. Now I personally think this is the largest size reel that you can use for throwing the smaller soft plastics. Once you go to about a 4000 size reel, it starts getting a little bit more difficult to start throwing those smaller two and a half and three inch soft plastics and the lighter weight. So yeah, I generally find 3000 is a good size. Um, here I find you can actually negotiate the cost of your outfit the most. So this outfit all up is about $500. Um, I've spent a fair bit of money on the reel. However, if you wanted to spend less, I'd recommend buying something like the Nasky in the 3000 size. The Nasky, in my opinion, is the best value reel in the entire Shimano range that's kind of at the top of the entry level. And while it's about half the price of the Stratic, it's not half the reel. Really, it's more like 80% the reel the Stratic is for half the price. So if you don't want to spend the same amount of money as I have on the Stratic, I'd highly recommend that you go to Shimano Nasky instead in the 3000 size. As for the braid that I'm using, I'm using the Gosen I can't remember exactly which PE it is, but it rates out at 16 pounds. So the Gosen is very, very thin and very slick, and it's very, very fine, but it's got excellent knot strength. So it's great for casting those really fine, small, soft plastics, but you've still got a bit of pulling power there for the bigger fish. As you saw, I got a big eight kilo snapper off the rocks on this rod and reel. No problem, it handled it without any issues. I wasn't worried about being undergunned at any point in time. The braid is really, really good. Now, I'd recommend, if you can, buying the Gosen or another very, very slick PE-style casting braid and spending a bit of money there. You get better casting distance and you feel much more confident about yourself when you hook the fish. So, while you can save in areas like the reel and not get something as like, you know, say like a $500, $600 soft plastics rod, I would recommend spending as much as you can on the braid and getting a good quality Japanese PE-style braid and around that 15, 16 pound mark now, as far as leader goes, I just use 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, I'm just using Shimano Osha fluorocarbon at this point in time. Um, I find 20 pounds a perfect size leader. It's, it's thick enough to take a bit of abrasion, but it's also quite thin. You can still get some, some quite long distance casts with the small soft plastics. So I suppose you could use up to 30 pound if you wanted to. If you wanted to go light, I probably 
you wouldn't want to go any lighter than 10. Like you're really risking losing fish there, but I find 20 is a really good size. Typically I'd use a thinner leader and probably lighter braid and a lighter rod, just lighter in general on the boat, um, especially if we're not anywhere near a reef, but because this is a land-based setup and I do have the rocks and I've got a few other snags I've got to try and pull a fish away from, it is a little bit of a heavier outfit, but it's, it's right on the top edge of what I can use to throw small soft plastics. So when the fish are feeding on those small bait fish, you need to throw small plastics. And if you're using a really heavy outfit, you're just not going to get a good cast with it. So that's it for the outfit, guys. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick look at the soft plastic lures that I've been using to catch the, uh, the snapper down there at the rock wall lately. So now we're taking a look at the soft plastics that I've been using down at the rock wall at Wyndham Harbour in order to catch the snapper there. So if you watch my video from earlier in the year where I was catching the mulloway off the rock wall there, what you'll notice is we're pretty much using the same soft plastics that I was using earlier in the year. So three to four inch paddle tails. So we'll just go through what I've got here. So here is a Z-Man three inch sling swims in watermelon red. And this is another one here in the midnight oil color. We've got the Munro's 3.75 inch paddle tails. Now this color here is Apple Crush. Another one that's kind of similar to it is Glass Monkey and that's been doing well. This is the UV motor oil color and that has been the best plastic so far. I've had more hits on this one than any other color. Up here we've also got the Kitek Wakasaji Easy Shiner 4 inch. Now that is also accounted for a couple of fish. And as you can see, it's also got that earthy color. So browns, your dark greens, sort of like your golden colors. Uh, they seem to be what's best representing the bait fish down there at the moment. When it comes to the jig heads that I'm using, I'm using anywhere from a 1 8 of an ounce through to 1 6 and up to a quarter ounce in size. I find that's about as heavy as you want to fish as the water's not too deep there around the harbour. So I'll use usually quarter ounce in order to get a fair de fairly decent cast going. And if it's with something like the Z-Mans, because they've got a little bit of buoyancy, they don't sink too fast. They sink at quite a nice rate. Now the one thing I do recommend is when you buy them, you buy them in a 1.0 and a 2.0 hook size. And when you do it, you make sure that you buy it in a heavy wire. Snapper's mouths are very tough. They're very, very, very rough on our tackle. So essentially you don't want to have any weak links in your gear. So you definitely want to make sure that you've got a heavy hook wire there. Now, one thing I've noticed down at the harbor when I've been trying to choose a soft plastic to use is sometimes you'll see the little bait fish swimming around your feet down there at the rock wall. When that happens, what I do is I get my soft plastic and I swim it through the bait school. If the bait school doesn't respond and they just swim along like normal, they think that your soft plastic is one of them. So if that happens, then you're definitely using the right plastic for the area. Okay, so now we're going to go over some of the jigging techniques, as well as little tips and advice that I've learned from fishing down there for the last six weeks or so. Now the first thing is, you're not fussy on how you jig the plastic. You can do like a long, slow lift, you can do a couple of quick flicks of the wrist, one quick flick of the wrist. They've hit it on the drop from a cast. Look, if you put it in front of their face and it's sinking, they'll generally hit it. So most important, obviously, with any kind of soft plastic fishing is watch that line when the soft plastic is sinking. Because what I've found is the bite is very, very light. Um, if you've ever fished down off the rock wall there and you've been catching a little salmon, it's almost identical to that. It's not like when you get, say, like a big flathead and it's a solid thump when they eat the plastic. It's a very light tap, tap, tap. So when you strike the, uh, strike the rod and try to set the hook, make sure you've got as much drag on there as you dare. Don't lock it down. Don't risk snapping off on the fish, but have as much drag on there as you dare because I've lost a few fish and I've basically cranked up my drag and I've had a better hookup ratio since. So use as much drag as you dare. And once you're hooking, if you think it's a really, really good fish, don't be afraid to back off the drag a little bit. One other thing, and this is more regarding land base than anything, but if you're fishing by yourself, it can be a little bit hard to carry a net around because I do like to walk around on the rock wall and cover a bit of ground. And if you're carrying a net, it can be really frustrating. So You've probably seen these in the videos. I call them boga grips, so that's what they were called many, many years ago, but they're also known as lip grips. So basically, when you get the fish up to the rocks, you can quickly grab them like that. I attach them on my belt loop, I can have them in my backpack. They're really easy to carry around, and for landing big fish off the rock wall there, they're, they're just an absolute godsend. So that's it for this video, guys. I'm pretty sure I've covered just about everything here. 
Um, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, and yeah, hopefully we'll get in some really good snapper fishing for you with this season coming up. It's shaping up to be really good, guys. See you again soon. Do a burnout, bro.